For the Cleveland Browns, 1988 may have been the strangest season of all. Began with the bright promise of summer and ended on a dark December afternoon. It was a season of unprecedented injuries to key personnel, especially quarterbacks. It was a season when the offense sputtered and stalled, committing turnovers on the first possession in eight different games. It was a season of spotty special teams performance. Five kicks were blocked, two of them led directly to defeat. It was a season of strange calls by officials and stranger play calling. Snap is good, and here's a fake. Runninger throws to Barr. Barr's in trouble on the left side, and Barry back at the 34-yard line. Barr was absolutely annihilated, and the little guy very slow to get up after that hit. Despite it all, this Browns team displayed the courage and character to overcome adversity. Cleveland made the playoffs for the fourth consecutive year. Nineteen eighty eight was a season of great expectations, shattered by some of the strangest events in the history of the Browns. The season began in Kansas City. Right from the start, there were signs this wasn't to be the Browns' year. Those are blitzed and hit, the ball pops loose. Bernie very slow to get up. Bernie Kozar got wrapped pretty good on that strong safety blitz. I can tell you this, Doug, he is in pain. He is in agony. Just 16 minutes into the new season, Kosar had literally become an armchair quarterback. But the defense took control. Twenty-nine seconds to go. Snap good. Hold good. Barr's kick is on the way, and it is good! Matt Barr was labeled as soon as he kicked the football, and he is injured at the... The opening win exacted a high price. Six key players, five of them pro bowlers, were hurt. The next week, with Kosar sidelined, Gary Danielson started the game. Incredibly, the quarterback carnage continued as the Jets, employing changing fronts and blitzing cornerbacks, knocked Danielson out of the game. Danielson's fractured left ankle ended his season for the second straight year, and the quarterback shuffle played on. This time with third stringer Mike Pagel calling the tunes. But it was Bud Carson's swarming Jet defense that set the tempo. In the home opener, Bud Carson and company danced away with an upset victory. The Browns had now failed to score a touchdown in their first two games. Against the Colts on Monday night, Mike Pagel finally got them into the end zone. Down on the left, Pagel to throw with time, firing end zone, Ozzie touchdown! Ozzie Newsom with a diving catch. Good throw by Mike Pagel. Pagel firing, slaughter, Hunter slaughter, wrestled the football away from Touchdown! That was just war. A little game of steal the bacon, or steal the pigskin in this case. One week later, the undefeated Bengals chewed up the ground game, and the Browns lost for the second time. But the defense continued to stand out. Against Pittsburgh, it forced five turnovers in the second half. Intercepted by Brian Washington at the 30. And didn't permit a touchdown for the third time in five games. 35, 30 at the 20. Washington to the 15, to the 10. He's going to score! From Cleveland Stadium, it's the Seattle Seahawks against the Cleveland Browns in what could very well be a pivotal game in the Browns' fortunes in the 1988 campaign. Right now, it's time to take a step forward. Let's get a hat on them every play. Let's get this thing started. We got to put something together back to back. We can close the coffin on these suckers right now, okay? 
get your man. That's all we got to do. Do your job. On three. One, two, three. Ho! Come on, G. Best play. Best play. Hey! How can Bosworth play with his jersey like that? Hey, how can Bosworth play with his jersey cut off like that? Look at it. It's Raglan. What I'm doing is this. As soon as I see him do this, I'm gone. Boom. So I'm going to try to catch him in the backfield. Defense prevailed, but the game turned on a kicker's nightmare, the double thud. Tegel puts it down, Matt Barr's field goal try is blocked, taken by Moyer, Moyer starts running up the left side with the ball, gets away, he might go all the way for a touchdown. Number 10, Mike Tegel, whose quarterbacking kept his team in contention, tried it with his tackling. It cost the Browns their third quarterback in six games. Five went down today. Huh? I understand five quarterbacks went down today. Is that right? Hey, good luck to you. Thank you. Great. With a cheat sheet rigged to his left wristband, Don Strock became the fourth quarterback in seven games. The Browns had gone from the youngest to the oldest starter in the league. Strock backs up. He is floating it. He has slaughter. He has a touchdown. While the attack was paced by Strock, Cleveland's top-ranked defense consistently confused one of the league's newer stars. Cunningham, third and Shaker Heights, third and 19. The Browns allowed only 18 second-half yards and racked up nine Cunningham sacks. Cunningham being hit, they get him again. Another sack. McMaster, come on now! Come on, sack! Let's see it, baby! Will Hill's in there. Charles Buchanan was in there, too. Not a sack, number nine. I'm impressed with this Cleveland Browns team. You have to be. They are strong. You can see why a lot of people were picking the Cleveland Browns to make it to the Super Bowl. The Browns impressed the Eagles and their announcers. Best of all, number 19 was ready to return. In the sun-drenched sweat box of Sun Devil Stadium, field temperatures reached 115 degrees. But Bernie Kosar had the hottest hand. Chased out of the pocket, rolling right, still rolling right, fires on the run, it is a touchdown to Ricky Bolden oh, on no. a tackle eligible, oh. and Doug Deacon is going to faint. Oh, well, the only thing about Ricky Bolden is that's a target you couldn't miss. Kosar to throw, second and three, blitzed, firing, end zone, great catch, run, touchdown by Reggie Langhorn, a marvelous catch. Well, he used all of his body to get that ball. In his first game since opening day, Bernie Kosar raised the performance level of everyone around him, hitting 10 different receivers for 314 yards and three touchdowns. With Kosar's triumphant return, the Browns were back in the playoff hunt. It has a lot to do with Bernie back. He's the leader of our team, and it just showed when he's in, everything goes the way it's supposed to go, and everything was clicking. Next were the first place Bengals, who always bring out the best in the Cleveland crowd. With the dog pound in form, Cincinnati's offense felt like it was facing over 80,000 defenders. Siasen turns to the referee and says, I can't hear, because the dog pound goes to work. Browns dig in up front. Siasen hands off. Icky works at the 11, and I don't think he got it. You can tell by the roar of the bleacherites. The dog pound is going crazy. We have had our first big emotional swing this afternoon. Thanks to three goal line stands, the Browns' defense didn't allow a touchdown. But the tide was turned on two outstanding plays by the special teams.
with an 84-yard kickoff return, then a touchdown recovery of a block kick. Special teams captain Herman Fontenot had a career afternoon. By Frank Minifield, rolling loose, Herman Fontenot picks it up for a touchdown! With its third straight win, Cleveland pulled within one game of division-leading Cincinnati. We're on a roll, and all I got to say to the teams coming up is look out, because we're back on track, and we're ready to go on to, to that destiny what we're reaching for, and that's the Super Bowl. Next came the House of Pain, where before a national television audience, a bad center snap cost Cleveland its final chance to win. But the disaster in the Astrodome was mild compared to six days later, when the team reached a new low in Mile High Stadium. Four first-half turnovers and six sacks led to defeat in Denver. Now, after back-to-back -back blowouts, Cleveland's postseason playoff picture looked bleak. Back home against the Steelers, the Browns bounced back. Like alone, baby, like alone, like alone. The catalyst was the longest pass play in 16 years. Goes to the right side, caught by Langhorn, breaks away at the 35, hit at the 40, breaks away again at the 50, the foot race is on. Reggie Langhorn just pulled away 77 yards. Over 77,000 rain-soaked fans saw the special teams block a punt for a touchdown for the second time this season. Blocked by Stephen Frank, the Browns will get a touchdown with Frank Minifield going in with a football. With a win over Pittsburgh, the Browns were in the race again. The next week in Washington, in a driving rain, they faced the Redskins, traditionally tough to beat in their home park. Under tremendous pressure all day, Kosar consistently beat the Blitz with short drops and sidearm passes that found Brian Brennan in stride. But Washington led. With time running out and hopes for the season fading fast, the Browns crossed up Joe Gibbs with a third down draw from a four receiver set. And off up the middle, Biner beats one tackler, beats two. Cleveland eliminated the defending Super Bowl champions from the race and gave themselves a huge emotional lift. They drew closer to their goal, an invitation to the postseason tournament for the fourth consecutive year. Seven days later, the beat went on. Kosar burned cowboy blitzes for three touchdowns, including a one-handed circus catch by Clarence Weathers. Firing for all of it, Weathers open, has the football, touchdown! What a catch, one-handed! The victory brought Cleveland's record to nine and five and continued their happy habit of winning when it counts the most in December. Unfortunately, the Dallas victory was followed by a Monday night in Miami where the team lost an aerial shootout to the Dolphins. They also lost Kosar for the second and final time. Don Strzok came in to haunt his former teammates. Little alley -oop for Langhorn, touchdown Browns! Don Strzok on the money! I'm sure he enjoyed that one. Strzok backpedaling, sideline pattern, Reggie Langhorn inside the orange pylon, and the Browns have staged a remarkable comeback. 
Strzok's brilliant relief couldn't overcome Miami. The Brown season was down to the final week. From frosty Cleveland Stadium, welcome to the regular season finale between the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Oilers. Win or else, it has finally come down to a must-win situation. Either the Browns defeat the Oilers today, or their season has come to an end. With all pros Kosar, Mack, and Dixon injured, it was up to Strzok to keep playoff hopes alive. But the 38-year-old Greybeard acted his age with three first-quarter interceptions as each defense traded knockout punches. And it's right into the arms of Brian, his second interception at the 30, the 20, the 15. One man was beat at the five. Touchdown, Domingo Bryan. Moon back, three step drop, and buried by David Grayson. He fumbles the ball. That was a pick league hit. Michael Dean Perry has it for a touchdown. The stadium is going berserk. Well, this is the house of decibels today. Snap throws the ball to the end zone. Touchdown, Haywood Jeffries. Down by 16, with snow blanketing the frozen turf, Cleveland faced the fight of its life. Let's go, defense. Let's go now. And then a turnover. Take it in. Take it in. First and goal. They give it to Biner, swinging right side. Goal line. Touchdown, Brown. With icy composure, Don Strzok brought his team back with the greatest performance of his 16-year career. Let's go, let's go! Let's take it home right now! Strzok firing over the middle, slaughter, touchdown! Unbelievable! The Browns have taken the lead. have staged an incredible comeback from a 23 to 7 deficit and they earn the AFC wild card spot and the home field advantage that goes with it. And Jerry Glanville gets to come back to Cleveland next week. Program here. Game day program. See the dogs here. Game day program here. Wild Good afternoon program. and Merry Christmas, everyone. The Oilers playing the Cleveland Browns here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. In this, the AFC Wild Card game. It is a cold, rainy afternoon. This is the real house of pain. We'll see today who tells lies and who don't tell lies. I say this is the house of pain. Right here in Cleveland, Ohio. You better believe it. We're on for today. We're on for today. The Browns are ready. We're going to the Super Bowl. Baby. Hit the beach on the snap. Snap. Hit the beach. Strzok fumbles the snap. Ball is loose. The Oilers have it at the 16-yard line. Don Strzok going out of the first snap of the second quarter with a jammed wrist. This has been the house of rain and the house of pain today for both teams. And here is Mike Bagel, who was just activated two days ago in case of an emergency, and the emergency is at hand. Bagel firing deep right side. Brennan got the ball at the 10 yard line and down. The great Bagel was on the money. Long game, baby. Be a long game. Keep going. Time to throw. Now chased out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Kicked and intercepted. It is intercepted by Mark Harper to the 30, to the 25. Tackle at the 22 yard line. Well, there is some justice after all. A third interception of Warren Moon. The defense has spoken. Fake handoff, little swing pass, knocked down in the backfield. Is that a lateral? Clay Matthews picks it up and goes into the end zone. They're going to look at this one again. It's a lateral. It should be a touchdown. Strange, strange, strange. Despite two controversial calls against them, 
Cleveland overcame both the officials and the Oilers to take a late third quarter lead. Go back of the pocket, looking over the middle, firing over the middle, touchdown slaughter! He came wide open on the post pattern! It's deja vu! And the Browns have overcome eight tons of adversity here to take the lead. But not for long. For the fourth consecutive season, the Browns' defense didn't have it when they needed it most, permitting a lengthy, game-winning drive. It cost Cleveland a playoff game they could have won. Though they never quit, Cleveland's painful path to the playoffs came to an end. Can't say it. It didn't go down to the bitter end in exciting fashion. When you consider that they went from Kosar to Danielson to Pagel to Strock to Kosar to Strock to Pagel. It's kind of remarkable they even came up at 10 and 6 and went on into the playoffs. We've come awfully close in the past four years, especially the two losses to Denver. It took a lot of heart out of the organization, but we had the resilience to to come bounce back. We want to make the final hurdle and get over that final hump and go the distance. That's the bottom line as far as I'm concerned because I know this organization expects that. I don't come in with any uh, illusions about what's expected of me. Uh, you've been there. You certainly want to go back. They didn't bring me here for there to be any slide backwards and uh, the first order of business is to see that there isn't. 